Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to the show at a Global TV and Radio. And welcome my dear co-host and friend and co-creator, Marcin. How are you doing, Marcin? Hi, Roland. Yes, I'm doing great. Hello, everyone. It's nice to um, be with you again. So, uh, Roland, what topic do we have for today? Yeah, just bring up the slides and then we can start, Mosin. Uh, so, bringing up the slides. I know, is it you or me who bring up the slides? No, uh, I cannot see it. Okay, okay. I kind of ah here yeah. we are. Here we go. Here we are. Technical issues, but here we go. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, may you remember those of you who joined our show two weeks ago. So for those of you who are new, the Earth Show is an environmental show at USA Global TV and Radio, uh, created and hosted by my dear friend Marcin and myself, and we do it bi weekly every two weeks. And actually, the last on the last. Uh, show we started but what can we do on a daily base to protect and respect mother earth and both of us we thought maybe go a little bit deeper because in the last show we talked about what we privately do just spontaneously and now we talk what you can what you can do and we also bring you some example and go uh, bro. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, I'm Roland, as you can hear from my, I'm not an American or UK, I'm born and raised in Austria, and here at USA Global TV, I do several shows, every Tuesday, the Mallorca Connection, where we have amazing guests from all over the world from different backgrounds, I do uh, the Talking Head, the business show, and on Wednesdays, every two weeks, together with Marcin, we do the Earth Show, which is really a hard project, I can say, for both of us. And every Wednesday, actually today too, afterwards we do Wild at Heart, a show for men by men about that. But let's focus on Mother Earth, on respecting Mother Earth, what we can do. So let's get started. And ladies and gentlemen, if you missed one of your shows, are we, we're going to record it. And soon our website will be launched. It's under progress. We're just going to translate it. So we have it in two languages. It's uh, uh, launched soon, but if you want to contact us already, please use our contact, our email. Uh, it's contact at respectmotherearth.com. So are you ready, Marcin? Let's go start it. Ready and steady. Yes, exactly. Okay. So uh, as previous show was uh, ended with some photos from actually our own backyards. And uh, here you can see my uh, the fragment of my porch actually and the question was there was like a little contest uh, the question was what uh, is this why is it there uh, what is it for uh, so I wonder Roland if you figured it out already yes I did but to be honest I I, I mean I won't tell you because you told me backstage but to be honest I had <laughs> no idea when I saw it. Anyway, I had no idea I was really wondering and and uh, you know I, I have your pictures <laughs> and I was looking what does he mean what can it be I had no idea but I know it because you told me backstage but I I don't tell the guests <laughs> all right so thank you for keeping the secret uh, actually guys uh, this is just um, the um, like um, fruit of a uh, um, sunflower. Yes, so if you know sunflower seeds and sunflower oil, it is made of these little seeds and um, it blossoms very beautifully. You can have it in your garden. It grows very tall and you can um, use it as a support for other plants as well. And in the autumn, as now, uh, we do have a lot of it and it is a very good way and ecological one, um, environmental friendly, uh, to feed uh, birds because um, 
uh, in Poland, in Europe, when when uh, where I am right now, uh, winter is coming pretty soon. So uh, autumn is already coldish time and that's why we try to just support uh, our neighborhood neighborhood uh, builds with uh, these um, feeder let's say but we use no artificial uh, things just the things that we grow in our own garden so that was the idea for you as well to have a beautiful flower and then have those um, seeds to feed some birds and you can eat it uh, as well because they are delicious I love that, um, Marcin, because, you know, yesterday on my Mallorca Connection, I had a guest from actually from California, and she's very into protective, especially the wildlife and preserve it, Amina. And we uh, the topic yesterday was a fat bear. A fat bear is a dead bear, meaning please don't feed any wildlife, especially not with artificial stuff, when you don't know what exactly is what they're eating. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so, so important. And I love it because it's sunflowers. They can take it if they want it, because especially in winter, yeah. they need it because otherwise they're starving. It's difficult to find food for them. Yeah. yeah. And no artificials. Uh, the, no artificials because probably, you know, um, in especially in the US, uh, there is uh, a lot of hummingbirds and uh, you can easily buy a feeder for a hummingbird, hum, uh, hummingbird, right? And uh, usually what they are fed it with is uh, sugar water, but uh, sugar water is not good for the health, right? So um, it is not, uh, it, it doesn't contain any um, molecules that they need, like proteins, for example. So uh, they love it, but then they struggle afterwards so be mindful uh, about what you feed the wildlife it's better to use some natural stuff that they will find um, on their own if you have some spare apples or spare um, any kind of vegetables you can feed it to the wildlife but not uh, like artificial one yeah and actually my dear friend you know we already have a, uh, actually with, with your with your quiz we already have a tip for our for our audience you know one thing you can do to, to respect Mother Earth and you respect uh, the creatures in the world, please, please don't feed them, first of all, artificial stuff. And secondly, especially wild animals like bears, like foxes, like wolves, whatever. Please like not ever feed it. They, yeah, they get used to it. Yeah. And they come always closer and closer to the people. And then some accident happen and then people get uh, shoot them like they did with the walrus in the U.S. because the, the walrus was used to get fed. Uh, they always jumped on boats. So the boats owners was really uh, pissed off and then they killed it. Mm -hmm. So please don't, yeah. for wild, especially for wild animals, birds are different. Yeah. Small, but wild animals, please don't feed them at all. We have just one topic. Can we continue, man? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's do it. So actually, uh, the beginning is uh, based on uh, one of my favorite quotes, and I love uh, all the quotes that uh, Albert Einstein left us. And this one is especially about the environmental protection. So insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And uh, I just got this feeling that um, Probably in some areas of environmental protection and fight for the climate change, uh, we just expect things to be normal as always and just waiting for it to pass somehow uh, by its own. And this is not the way. So uh, probably you already heard a lot of uh, calls like, like that, that we need to do something. And uh, I don't know about you, Roland, but uh, I can uh, easily spot people that are, you know, they love the idea. They can even, uh, you know, uh, agree with us that the change is needed. And we all can sit together and say, yes, we need to do something. Yeah, let's do something. Yeah, we need to do something. Something needs to be done. But at the end of the day, we do not know what exactly needed to be done. So nothing is done. Right, we we okay. talked about it uh, today, Roland. Even right about being um, perfect and imperfect, and what is done is always better. Right, so uh, we thought uh, maybe we will uh, bring this topic closer. We will talk between each other, but also invite you as 
our guests to explore different things, a very precise things that you can do, and uh, we are inspired uh, to do, uh, starting with starting with uh, some ten, ten things uh, according to the uh, Global Health Organization um, that needed to be uh, needs to be done. Mm. In all, no, sorry, I missed the <laughs> I missed the organization, but you know this shortcut. So uh, these are like uh, ten things uh, that are uh, recommended. Uh, and Roland, if you if you may, just uh, say a little bit about that. Of of course, of course. As as, as Marcin said, uh, you abs I absolutely are uh, absolutely agree with you. Uh, it's it's just it's doing. It's better doing a little bit than nothing. Just do a little bit, uh, if probably on a daily basis, and maybe you try something different than in the past. Because mostly, uh, what 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 we did in the past was maybe not very helpful. So try different things, and yeah, we have there there are ten things that they recommend on their website. And first of all, first one is you use your voice, meaning. Everyone has a voice. You have, a, for example, I give an example. You have a voice as a customer. You decide what you buy or you don't buy. You have a voice as a member of society. Speak up, speak to other people, educate other people. So there are so many options of using your voice. Anything to add on, on the first topic, Marcin? Mm, I think uh, using our own voice is something that uh, is very general because we can use this voice also to steer some um, fake news and information that are not confirmed. So it is uh, very important to use this uh, advice uh, in um, bulk, right, with other ones as well. Yeah. Especially, I was, what I want to add on the first point is use your voice. Some people say, yeah, it's just me. And nobody knows me. I'm small. I don't know if you ever shared your dormitory with a very small mosquito. It rules you totally. So one small mosquito can make a difference. So and you can make a difference too. And when one uh, stands up with your voice, a second one can become a role model and use your voice. Secondly, be informed. Very very important. I mean, it's all about education. Learn about it. Uh, whatever. You, Maybe you read more. I I love to see videos. I educate myself on 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 YouTube and other channels. I inform myself about different options of recycling, about uh, food production, planting, composting, uh, whatever, whatever is possible. So get be informed. Uh, whatever whatever you can do, what's going on in the world, how you can contribute, what is necessary, what you should avoid, what you can do differently. Uh, be informed. If there's a, maybe an alternative technology, for example, uh, get energy in your house, maybe can you do something differently? Maybe there are other alternatives. Uh, I don't know. In 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 in, do, in spending your vacations, or in in moving from A to B or stuff like that. So be be informed. There's a lot of information outside. Please switch up mainstream media and inform yourself on the platforms. For example. Like can you a global radio where you have 29 different shows every week on different topics where you can get informed. Anything to add? No, uh, I just meant uh, with the previous one that uh, if you want to use your voice, it is important that you use the proper information. So that's what I meant. And um, not only YouTube is a source of knowledge, because actually I can even start to uh, you know, record something out of my head and promote it, and then, and then it will be visible. Uh, you can watch it. But at the end of the day, it is important to check uh, in uh, good sources. And good source for me as a scientist is just science. So if you can Google uh, like the easiest research, a uh, scientific one in one of the mm, you know papers that you can easily find on Google Scholar. If it is really true what is written down or said that I just heard, if something troubles you, makes you uncomfortable, it is important for you to uh, find out to the source. So what kind of source uh, do they had in order to say that? And is it really true? Is it really helpful? Uh, 
for me it is like a call to dig deeper and uh, not stay on the shallow uh, of the information uh, try to know what is really inside it absolutely and what i also do is when i i go back to the source for example for a research for a study I always have a look, if possible, who sponsored this and whose interest it is. Or as I say, follow the money. It is also a good hint of that. This brings us to topic number three, be political. Yeah, be political. Engage yourself. Engage yourself in your community, for example. Yeah, be political. And we don't talk here about left or right, red or blue, whatever. It doesn't, that's not about that. It means just uh, take responsibility, educate others, engage in the community. That's for me, be political without whatever party you prefer, whatever, it's not about that. And, I, and actually, it doesn't matter if you're left, right, blue, red, whatever, we all stay in the same boat. We have to be clear about that. We all are in the same boat. No matter what background we have, what religion we have, what color we have, what political direction, we're all in the same boat. It's all about protecting and respecting Mother Earth. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, in in largest portion I do, uh, but as um, I also know that uh, the political questions and topics are usually something that we do not want to talk about, especially in business, in I don't know uh, situations like that, because we do not want anyone to be offended. And um, I understand this call as uh, be open about uh, our political views, but also uh, look for the candidates and uh, for parties and people that promote uh, wildlife freedom, promote uh, pro um, solutions and uh, environmental friendly programs because uh, sometimes you can be um, surprised what your candidate really wants to know uh, and want to say about environment and some of them even do not believe in the global warming and uh, yeah there is a freedom for every view in this world but you can decide uh, for who you will uh, go to the you know um, polls and who will you choose amongst other so i understand that uh, this means we cannot be political uh, without thinking about the environment so an environmental agenda should be something really really important for any candidate from any party from any region culture and places right yeah and and uh, if you consider any candidate or any political body whatever is your favor don't not just only listen to the words the promise before the elections look at the actions afterwards okay look at the actions afterwards that's even more important than all the promotion and commercials in the beginning okay travel responsibly yeah of course when you travel uh think about alternatives is it always the airplane uh maybe you can take a train is it always the car maybe you can take a train or, or when you're in the city maybe you can take public transportation or when it's just close by maybe you can ride a bicycle or even walk and i give you like i do yeah I'm, I'm i'm riding my motorhome i live in my motorhome i travel through europe i work remotely from motorhome but i only use it to go to a to b when i'm stay somewhere and i said in a, in, a, in a previous show i walk to the supermarket i walk to the laundry i walk all because i didn't bring a bike maybe unfortunately so i walk all this i don't use my motorhome it would be more convenient yes to be honest yes it would be but uh, I would uh, have a larger carbon footprint first. And secondly, it's also healthy for me uh, when I walk. So travel responsibly before you book a ticket, whatever it is, think about it. Is there an alternative? Or when you want to start your car, is there an alternative? And especially in the US, everybody's driving, drive through, drive in. Uh, yeah, think about it a little bit. Maybe you, I mean, to be honest, I mean, just one example, I mean, Maybe you, you drive your car uh, to the office and later after the office, you drive your car to the gym to do some workout. Maybe if there's a chance, just an example, maybe you ride your bicycle to the office or when it's closer, you run to the office. If you have the chance to shower there, change your clothes, do your business, do your work and run the cycle back. Cool for the body, cool for the environment. Just uh, an example. And last uh, on, on the left, eat sustainably. Yes, and, and to be honest, I don't care if you're vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, whatever you eat. Please eat stuff that is 
season from the season. I mean, to be honest, do we have really have in winter? Do we have to eat strawberries in winter and import them thousands and thousands of miles? Is yeah, also eat sustainable meaning buy local, support local producers, local farmers, organic, of course, of okay, organics, uh, and yeah, eating sustainable also means. That you have a look on where it's coming from, how it's produced and made, and maybe you avoid some products that are not really healthy, not only have a negative carbon footprint, but also are not healthy. Eat sustainable means what I mean indirectly. When you eat healthy, uh, meaning you avoid maybe local sugar, but when you avoid it, then on the long term, you avoid medication pharmaceuticals. That will also pollute the environment when you go for a loo. Okay? So eat sustainable, buy local, eat local, eat from the season, avoid bad stuff, avoid fast food, what is really bad, because afterwards you have to go to the doctors, you need pharmaceutical, and this is not good for the environment too. And for you also. What and uh, yeah, well, about eating, uh, I thought maybe um these you know there are seasons for sure that we now we love to use some pumpkins uh, in europe the season is very generous with different fruits and and veggies so this is like a very very nice season for uh, different things and recipes that you can try and i totally agree that during winter we do not necessarily need like fresh tomatoes and things that we grow in the greenhouses but even if you decide to buy those uh, just look at the label because uh, usually when you go to the grocery uh, to do some groceries uh, you can see um, what is the country of origin uh, or state of origin and then you can easily decide between apple a and apple b right just based on when where it was produced and whether or not it was uh, like transport transported for thousands of miles in order to land in your hands and then it wasted so much energy uh, as you also have apples uh, in your state right or in your country so you can use just the local ones and you don't do not need to change like everything at once you can just make those small changes in order to save at least you know every every ounce of co2 and all of those gases that we can spare our planet is a plus right is a progress so we can add to that absolutely absolutely that's what i mean uh, you know i mean you of course you can eat uh, tomatoes in winter when you grow them at home in, in a glass house yes uh but please uh when you go to the supermarket look exactly where it's coming from it gives us double i was last week in a beautiful area in and in um, on the side, but back well, it's a very green valley there, and thousands of avocado plant bushes, thousands. The green avocados, really nice ones. And I went to a market to buy them, and I had a look at the labels, and oh, they come from Peru. Hey guys, nothing against Peru, beautiful country, anyway. But I'm here in Spain. They produce locally avocados. I never ever would buy avocado from Peru, so I was really looking for a local market, to, and I asked them where they're coming from. I said here from the region. Okay, I buy them. So have a look at that. It's very, very important. Or actually from my home country, where I come from, from Austria, we are an apple country. And in the supermarket, you get apples from South Africa, from everywhere. Please buy local. Okay? Eat sustainable. Buy local. And also, this brings us also to the next one, reduce waste. I mean, reducing waste, of course, we talk a lot about plastic. But if you eat sustainable, meaning buying fresh local stuff, you have less plastic too. You have uh, less packages. Yeah? Packaging. So uh, re reduced waste wherever it's possible. Uh, first of all, and if it's not possible, please recycle it. Yeah, separate it. Bring it to a recycle station. And, and by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the next show in two weeks on the second of November, we're gonna have a very interesting interview guest, Amaya Rodriguez from the Gravity Wave, and they started a company. Uh, where they have contracted thousands of fishermen fishing plastic out of the sea, recycle it, and produce sustainable products. So, okay, first of all, reduced waste, of course. Secondly, if not, you can reduce, please 
bring it to a recycle station, but reduce it. And it can mean that when your super I mean, when your local market or your supermarket is offering what some really do, you bring your own packages, for example. Yeah. And then they fill in the sausage, the cheese, the sauce, whatever you're buying. Yeah, bring your own stuff or bring your own fruit net where you put the fruit in or your own vegetable net or whatever. So it's really easy. You can contribute it, reduce as much as possible. And secondly, uh, recycle. Please go to a station, collect it, plastic, paper, or the cartoons, glass, or cans, and so on. Basically, for example, I have not much waste, to be honest, because I don't buy stuff um, in, in plastics. I don't buy stuff in cans and stuff like that. So when you buy locally, fresh, uh, you reduce waste. And when you produce your food also at home, uh, which is one of my favorites later on, then you also reduce waste. So there, there are many, many options in reducing waste. What you, what you buy, I mean, of course, have a look where the things are coming from. It's only not only about food, but have a look where it's coming from, what material is used. Is it a recyclable material? Is it a product that really pollutes the environment? I give an example, and I'm, 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 I'm very honest. I'm absolutely not a fan of electric cars. Absolutely not, because the carbon footprint of the production is terrible, is terrible. There are studies outside. You have to drive 200,000 miles a normal gasoline car to have the same carbon footprint. So I'm not a fan of it. So watch out. Please don't get into the trap that you buy green washed products. Do your research if it really makes sense or not. So watch what you're buying. And also consider if you really need it. Is it nice to have or do you really need it? I mean, guys, I can afford many products. I have a good income, a good lifestyle. But I really, I give you an example. I'm, Sorry uh, for the producer, uh, some 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 commercial. I used this smartphone. I bought it four years ago. In between, three out of three out of four other models came out. I didn't buy it. Okay, they look great. They're much better. Yes, but mine is still working. I don't throw it away. Okay, so why don't throw things away? Buy always the newest stuff. It doesn't make sense when you all think about all this electric garbage that is collected and and, and different lands, mostly in Africa, and pollutes the environment, the, the, the rivers and lakes. Yeah. So watch out what you buy. You want to add something, Marcin? Uh, well, I would say that those two points are connected somehow as well, because uh, you can just very easily reduce your uh, wastes by just watching what you buy. So uh, I must say it's not very easy often because, uh, for example, I got used to a certain kind of products, but I can see that they produce those uh, just uh, excessive amount of uh, packaging in plastic. So I decided to go for something that was issued in uh, glass jars, for example. So the product is different, the brand is different. So at the beginning, I was not very happy about that, but it was more important for me that I at least decide with my money uh, what brand uh, will be then uh, promoted, right? And if I can promote with my money, with my everyday choices, these brands that are just using less packaging or those smart packagings, um, the packages that you can easily turn apart uh, in order to recycle, uh, to select proper uh, plastic things in order to recycle them or um, the second thing that i would add here is uh, something that was i learned from my mother actually so uh, probably uh, i don't know roland let's uh, let's be honest how many tupperware boxes do you own right now or tupperware like well, boxes yeah 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 i mean, I mean not not from this from the specific brand but i do have because i use them to to store stuff, what I, what I didn't finish it, I, I use it to, to free stuff, especially mm -hmm. when my garden has too much tomatoes, I can make my tomato sauces for winter or too much, whatever it is. I use mm -hmm. this, of course, to store the stuff. And I also use them when I'm, I'm somewhere where I know that the shop offers me the opportunity, I bring my own boxes, they fill it in, so they have no plexus. Mm -hmm. I use them too. Yes, I have them, but not this specific brand. Mm -hmm. And yeah. most so, of them, most of them are not of plastic, most of them are of, of glass. 
of Crystal. Great. So uh, what I would add to that uh, is that if you already own some uh, plastic uh, things like that, no matter what brand would you use, or the glass ones, just keep those. But uh, look at the packages that you are uh, buying stuff in, because some of them uh, can be reused for at least for some period of time uh, in order to store some uh, dry foods, for example. And this was something that my mother used to do. So um, when she bought uh, ice creams in these big plastic boxes, uh, she often um, left those boxes and reused them in order to store other things. And uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, at the beginning, I was like, why you are doing that? It looks like garbage. But uh, then later on, I learned that actually she just reused, uh, was reusing those packages again and again, giving them another life. So they uh, didn't end up in, you know, uh, some kind of uh, um, environment or in the forest, in a, in a river or in the ocean, because she was using it over and over again. And at the end, she could make like, a, I don't know, um, a box for other things, not, uh, not food, because probably, you know, those packages that you buy your food in, usually they have uh, this uh, expiration date for the plastics as well. So over time, those plastics can just release some uh, dangerous toxins and that's why if you want to reuse some packages from your food that you buy uh, for your food you can do it just for a short period of time and after a few months you should use it for uh, non-food only i don't know if it is clear absolutely absolutely yeah absolutely okay Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 just to, if you're reducing waste, and what sh uh, what should you buy? Uh, just an example. I have here bottled water. Uh, okay, that's the brand. But it's a, why did I buy this brand? Because it's just a crystal. It's not plastic. And to be honest, I had this water four years ago. I bought this water four years ago, free bottle. I still have them because I always refill them because I use a water filter system. But I guess we for sure will make our, our own show in the future about water, water filtration. But what it means is I don't have to carry water home and I avoid a lot of plastic or glass or whatever. But we will do a different way. But it's one way. Uh, not buying any water using your ones, and if it's not a good one, filter it. But we have a different show on that. So let's continue. Find ways to donut, to donut, not to not, not to eat a donut, to donate. No, donate. To yeah. Yes. Find <laughs> well, you know, for me, if we, it would be about uh, donut, I would love it. So if uh, this organization is just recommending us to eat lots of donuts, I'm for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my friend. Okay, so find ways to donate. So yeah, I, I do it too, but I have a very, uh, very clear look on the organization. And to be honest, I don't donate to big organizations, sorry, WWF, because too much money is spent on the administration and only a, a small percentage goes directly to the thing. So I donate to smaller community organization where the money goes directly to those who need it. Okay, so find ways to donate. Yes, do it. It's a good way. Uh, I have the. Um, I have the. Um, I always did something. And I said, okay, I, I donate monthly the money I would spend on a daily basis on a coffee, for example. Uh, this is all. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I do this, but I only give it to an organization where I know that it's a ninety-five to hundred percentage go directly to the issue and not in administration. So read the Living Planet Report. Yes, this uh, relates to be informed. Read the Living Planet Report or any other report. Get informed uh, and then use your voice and be political. And last but not least, volunteer you for your world, it says. Yes, volunteer yeah. uh, or do karma yoga. Yeah, Become a karma yoga. If you really want to respect Mother Earth, if you really want find out what is a karma yoga it has nothing to do with stretching or whatever crazy posture karma yoga means you serve without expecting any reward and this can be maybe you bend down and collect trash or you go to community or whatever it is 
volunteer, do your Kamba yoga, and we will have uh, stone for other, with other very interesting uh, guests, Jeffrey Armstrong, who is on the way to India right now. I got another word. Uh, we will speak about Kamba yoga, how you, Kamba yoga you can contribute to protect and respect Mother Earth. So this is a tense, but we go more, we go deeper, Masin. Yes. So now, guys, imagine that there are some lists that we dig deeper and found that uh, contains more than a hundred ways actually to um, fight for the climate, fight for our environment, fight for our planet. And uh, now if you are expecting that we are expecting you to comply with all of those uh, things and your reaction is probably like that, just uh, not be alarmed because uh, we are very realistic here. So uh, firstly, when I read uh, 100 things, I thought, oh my God, I, I will never fulfill all of those checkboxes, right? So I thought, so maybe I will just choose some of my, our fa my favorites, uh, some of these that I can do um, the easiest way, because we are here not to, you know, say that everyone should start to uh, live like a uh, hermit. Uh, I would rather say that if you listen to that, do at least one small change for the better, then collectively we will bring some progress for the planet so that's the idea so we look through all of those things for you and if you want to find like a full list just email us uh, at uh, contact, contact at uh, yes roland can you please uh, give this address once again yeah please con uh, email us to contact at respect respect mother earth .com. email us mm -hmm. if you want it and then we send you the full list Yes, yeah, so a bunch of email, a bunch of links and uh, ideas that you can use, and we just uh, want to inspire you to look through it and find your uh, favorites, the things that you can do uh, in your life. So now let's uh, get to uh, Roland's favorites. Uh, so Roland, what did you pick? Yes, uh, first of all, be before I start, uh, as Masin said, 100 is a lot. And, you know, I'm working as, as an international business consultant trainer in my, in my main job uh, since uh, 25 years. And I always say to my delegates after workshop, what is your insight? What is your takeaway? And, and what did you learn? But it's a bunch of stuff. Please focus on, the, on one. Focus on one. Implement it. Change your behaving. Implement it. And when it's implemented, focus on the next. So step by step. Don't because otherwise you're overwhelmed. And actually, hey guys, you know, from your own experience, when you do your New Year Eve's uh, thing, yeah, first of January, I stop smoking, I start running, I eat less, I do this and this. It's too much. You get overwhelmed, you get frustrated. You maybe you don't even start, or you you just stop on the first or on the third or on the fifth day. So that's why we choose three of us each of us and uh find yours on the list and really maybe it's not free maybe you pick one out and say okay that's just that's one my contribution as a start because every journey starts with the first step every journey starts with the first step and when you love your first step you feel comfortable you celebrate and maybe you do a second step a third step and so on yeah so let's start with mine uh one of my favorite and it's it's i always Say it, and as I'm traveling, I always, always buy local. That's really what I do. Really, what I do. and and there's no 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 mile too much for for walking to get. I, wherever I am, wherever I park my motorhome, my first thing is I Google where's the local market, when is the local market, where's the local market, and I buy my vegetables, my meat, my bacon, my bread, or whatever I, I want to have, I buy it there. So first of all, it's because I don't want to buy stuff that comes from somewhere i want to uh yeah i just want to support local uh producers. i mean people always complaining we don't get this good quality this come from there yeah man it's about you you decide if your local producer survives or not so i support them uh, and by the way i always have interesting chats because i always are uh, when i have time um i always ask them about their production sometimes i have the time and i get invited to see the farm yeah it's interesting how they grow the vegetables, interesting how they grow the, their cattle, stuff like that. So I always buy local 
recycle. First of all, it's it's cheaper. Secondly, no carbon footprint, almost no carbon footprint. It's fresh. You know where it's coming from. Maybe you get the chance to see the production, how to grow it or whatever to do. And you connect with other people. And maybe you try something different. Sometimes on a market, I find, to be honest, years ago, I was also buying the supermarket. But when I changed my behavior and buy local, I found old types of fruits. Old I've never seen in a supermarket. They taste different. They taste really good. And uh, actually, organic stuff tastes much, much better. It's much healthier. And I buy local. Okay? That's what I do. I buy local. That's one of my favorites. Because I know that food, as we mentioned before, has a huge impact on the environment. That's my local one. So I go a little bit, hurry up a little bit. There's not much time left. So plant your food. That's my second one. Okay? Buy local, but also plant your food. If you, maybe you have a garden. If you don't have a garden or a backyard, maybe you have a terrace, a balcony. If not, maybe you can plant inside on on the on, on a window. Uh, as I said before, start small. Maybe you grow some herbs. Maybe you grow some tomatoes at home, where are quite easy to grow. And you, you love it, and you start more and more and more and more. That's how I started. I grew up in a, in, in a city, in a huge city. I started small on the balcony. Then I started on, I got a, a, a top roof, uh, uh, how do you say, penthouse. The whole top roof penthouse, besides the jacuzzi, was full with square square foot gardening. So I did grow stuff like that. Then I moved into a finca in Spain. It became larger. Now I'm in a motorhome. As I'm moving as a nomad, I cannot grow stuff, but I have my herbs, which I grow freshly. But I'm looking for real estate, uh, maybe in Portugal, I don't know, to do permaculture. So grow and plant your own food. If you have a garden, fine. Backyard, fine. If not, terrace. There's no excuses. Just start. And my last one is join communities. I, you know, with everything, when you want to lose weight, uh, uh, you get much more motivated with, with, with buddies, yeah? when you have a peer group. If you want to plant uh, fruits, maybe you want to learn, learn something because you have a garden about composting, or you want to do this or this, join a community. Yeah, you learn from them, you can share your experience, you can uh, support each other, you can motivate each other to keep going, not to give up. Join a, com a local community. There's always a local community around you. The question is, do you want to join it? Okay, so that's my last point. And I want to give the last minutes to my dear friend, Marcin. I'm looking forward to what your favorites are. Okay, so uh, I picked up something that was new for me, uh, even though I am in this topic. When I was uh, just reading through it, uh, I found it fascinating that things like that existed. So uh, I bring it to you. And the first one is volunteer vacations. So actually, I just learned today that there are some services that you can join and you can spend wonderful vacation in other state or in other country. It can even be some tropical country, but you are not just lying, you know, uh, on the beach, uh, drinking and uh, eating and getting fat and tanned. Uh, um, the other thing um, you can do is that uh, working for the local community. So you can enroll as a, a volunteer worker you can get paid like a little money that will just uh, be enough for you to uh, sustain yourself in the in this place you can enjoy wonderful weather and uh, nature and just all of the wonders of this world but at the same time you can just work for the local community you can plant trees you can i don't know uh, help on the farm you can uh, help in communities but just doing something different that you do in your everyday job for you, it is like a vacation. You will go back and you will be refreshed. Your mind will be uh, refreshed, but uh, you did something good uh, with your hands. So for me, it's like a perfect plan for vacation. Next one uh, from my list uh, would be... Yes, uh, that was uh, something that uh, just made me smile. So if you are thinking about things that you can do for our planet, then probably you think about about big things like buying an electric car on or maybe setting like those uh, you know uh, solar batteries on your roof or doing some cr crazy crazy stuff like starting a big garden uh, but 
actually you can do it in very small gestures it's almost like an act of love if you ever loved anyone you know that the love is in those small gestures so next time that you will be loading your dishwasher just think about your mother earth uh, think about your planet and just pack this thing up before you run it. It's so simple. So just do not get lazy. Do not run the whole dishwasher for one bowl because it will be just pointless and also you will, you will waste some money. Just pack it full. If you already have it, use it, but uh, use it wisely. And the last thing for me uh, would be um, stop using chemical weed killers. Uh, you need to be very precise when you buy anything for your garden because there is like a lots and lots of products uh, but you need to read through uh, the um, etiquettes and uh, all of those things that is written on the packages because some of these um, chemicals actually contain uh, particles that can influence you your children uh, animals that you have and for sure the wildlife so if you want to use any products for your garden just uh, make sure that you will use the organic version so for example vinegar mixed with uh, with lemon juice or mixed with baking soda or mixed with whatever you can find lots and lots of different recipes for uh, the products that will work but not hard Harming the environment, not uh, like um, building up uh, within uh, fungi and uh, in plants, and then go back to your plate. So that was all from me. And Roland, I think it's time for us to wrap up. Yes, absolutely. sorry, I disappeared shortly. I'm staying in a wild motorhome. My dog was barking like crazy. I brought him. <laughs> I so, mean, so, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you inspired, whatever action you inspired, the question is, can you take it? Yeah, can you take and 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 t take whatever you want to put out? And as I said, and Marcin mentioned it, write us an email contact at respect.com. Uh, we are more than happy to send you the hand list and you can pick up whatever you want. And please let us know what is you want. Yeah, and maybe we can build up a community and, and support each other, share it, uh, what, what we are doing, and then we are growing and growing. And you know, when thousand people do one step, we already did thousand steps and so on. And then it's like, you know, like throwing a small stone in the sea and then the wave slowly, slowly brought. Broaden. Yes. So we come to an end. Uh, thank you, my dear friend. Uh, thank you for all. Uh, thanks thank for, for preparing this presentation. And it was always a, it's always a pleasure with you to work together and prepare this. And we can announce that on the next show, on the 2nd of November, we bring an amazing lady, Amaya Rodriguez. She's the founder, together with her brother, of the Gravity Wave, an incredible organization. What they do is they contracted thousands of fishermen, collecting plastic from the sea, recycle it, and produce sustainable products. An amazing station we bring here uh in two, and in four weeks we will have captain paul what's the form of c or ceo and co-founder of greenpeace and of sea shepherd and we will talk about the sea and whales okay okay let's come in thank you so much see you again in two weeks on the 2nd of november wednesday normally an hour before 7 p.m central Europe p.m. time, 1 p.m. East Standard Time or 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time. Thanks, Masin. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Roland. Bye-bye. See you, you again at USA Global bye -bye. Radio. Bye-bye.